Steve uh, is the Director of Strategic Business Planning and Development at Metrolinx, where his focus is on driving non-fair revenues through relationships with new and existing clients, partners, retail accounts, and innovative commercial opportunities. Since joining Metrolinx in 2011, he is using his experience to lead the creation of Metrolinx's newest division, which is the Customer Experience and Marketing Group. The mandate of the Customer Experience and Marketing Group is to drive Metrolinx and its, and its service brand's promise, serve as a revenue and growth driver, and finally build business relationships with stakeholders, leading the way in generating innovative, non-fair revenues. Welcome, Steve. Thank you. So, uh, my presentation will be a little different than first two, we're going to take you through the journey that Metrolinx has gone over the last four or five years and examining what the customers want and how we can provide a better experience for them while adding money to our bottom line. So when you look at Go Transit, you look at the Up Express, you look at the Presto card. Each one of them has had great customer satisfaction. It's been recognized as a leader in what the service they provide in the area and the customers have come back and say they trust the brand and what we represent. So what we've gone back and tried to utilize that as an opportunity and a platform to go out and address additional problems and issues they have so that we can drive ridership. And as we do that, look at opportunities where we can then increase our revenue as an organization. So uh, what we also found is that they don't just travel on Up Express, they don't travel on Go. It's a destination to go to someplace else. And principally in our research, we found they've done either thing, etc. So what are the benefits of partnership? We've been very clear in establishing a benefit program to both represent what needs the customer, the private sector, and Metro Links. So obviously for the customer, when we go out and choose something, if it's not providing a direct need that they provided to us, we will not go forward with an initiative. The second thing we've done is we need to have private sector partners deliver this service so that it's actually a benefit to Metro Links and the customer and not taking away from the experience they have on the transit system. Also, we look for them to provide benefits that we as an organization have difficulty providing because we don't have the money available to us, the capability, the technology, or maybe the market present uh, uh, marketplace to, to do that. What we get out of it is invariably we get a halo effect as the service improves. We get additional revenue and we provide a service that wasn't available previously. So what I've shown here is a number of examples that worked with the Up Express. We have partnered with uh, CIBC and they brought additional amenities that we couldn't afford as part of the business plan we initially put it forward, such as Wi-Fi on the train, having cash available to service that last minute need as you run to the, to the uh, airport to ensure you have the cash to the destination you're going to, and then also providing a seamless, easy environment that promotes a number of services for each of our partners that are of interest <coughs> to the traveling public, and that's worked quite well. As you can see, the public responded quite well to the uh, information we provided to them and the operations, operations we provided to them. Uh, we get a lot of positive social media con content back. And also when we look at our scores, uh, customer satisfaction scores have been very, very good and there's constant reference to the additional amenities we provide as an organization. So one of the things we had to do over the last four or five years is actually rethink how we present things. One of the things that uh, startled me most was the aspect that people want a coffee. We had 23 coffee stations, and they're basically a coffee station at every third uh, transit station we owned, and they did not provide a lot of revenue, and the customer service, their customer survey showed they weren't well respected. So we had to think, rethink our whole approach to that as the contract was coming up for renewal. And this picture, I think, shows uh, what we were thinking of where we're going. We initially looked at the coffee side of it. We looked at it as purely a vendor relationship. We set it out in place. We advertised. We chose the best person who responded. Conversely, this time we went around. We looked at the marketplace. What did our customers actually want? How do we actually reach out and ensure those kind of organizations are interested in working with a bunch of ones? And then how do we develop that relationship over time? And one of the results that came out of it, Tim Horton stepped up never responded to a formal proposal for Metrolinx or Go Transit before and we've been working with them to ensure that they create a viable market and ensure a viable rate of return 
uh, at a number of pilot stations before we move into the long term agreement. So, um, one of the issues we have, we always want to run a fair, open, and transparent uh, process. And you will not see us talk to about our partnership arrangements as, as a procurement because we define them in our documentation not to be procurements but to be a selection process. That said, all of our CEOs in the time we've been there have been very clear that we have to uphold the fair, open, and transparent process. And we've done that with each and every one. And we've not had any issues knock on wood on the selection process to date. And we've worked through it with the organizations. What we have received back is each one of the organizations, whether they've been successful or not successful, has commented on the selection process as a way to allow them to provide their best foot forward and to ensure that they get a fair and equal uh, hearing as we do our selection process. One of the things we like about it is we don't have to define what the outcome, or sorry, the process to get to the outcome for the customer. We allow an open-ended process. It allows people to come forward with the best ideas. And then as we work through that uh, evaluation process, we end up selecting the, the uh, organization that provides the best benefit to the customer. So, in the organization, this was a big, big, big change in how we proceeded. And we've been working on the cultural elements in that we're not looking at this as a vendor relationship. We have to partner with people. We have to actually look at achieving a beneficial outcome for all parties involved in the, uh, in the engagement. We have to respect the timing. We eventually thought we could do this quickly. We found the actual evaluation selection process takes a lot more time than a typical procurement. But then the speed from the selection to implementation can be a lot faster. Uh, we had to work with a number of people on how we selected the organizations, how we evaluated them, and how we ensured that uh, we could demonstrate we protected the public purse. And each one of our major partnerships has an independent valuation determining that present value to the organization. We carry that forward. And that is approved depending on the size of the initiative, either at our senior management team or through the board of directors. We also have to ensure when we go through that process, the complete plan, brand alignment and it ties to what the customer needs and wants are. And we've had a wonderful amount of support from our executive team. They've understood it's taken, it's taken uh, time to change. We understand that it's not easy to do, and whenever we've asked them to think differently, uh, we've had some interesting conversations, but we've been able to achieve the outcome to, to change the organization and benefit the customer. So, what are some of the partnerships look like we have at Metro Lynch right now? We basically group our partnerships into four categories, and they tie to our strategic objectives. First of all, we have major partners that help us deliver the business as a whole. Uh, Deloitte, Cisco, Shoppers, Loblaws, they're involved in our daily operations and provide upfront services and benefits to the organization. And they also contribute cash or reduce operating costs in the organization. We have a number of retail partners. This has uh, helped us to increase our brand acceptance. And people have said that they are a major uh, positive impact on in choosing Go Transit or choosing uh, Up Express. And you'll see Mill Street uh, Group Up in the Up Express. If you uh, want a good beer and you're waiting to go to the airport, this is a cheaper beer than it is at the airport. Uh, Balzac's Coffee, Tim Hortons Coffee, uh, both uh, Canadian brands that uh, represent our uh, represent a good brand in line with us. We have promotional partnerships that help drive ridership. So our largest one is the Canadian National Exhibition. We figure it adds about a quarter million riders a year as a promotional partnership. And we also do the Canadian Open. What works for us, it's really good off-peak. It's taking people from Toronto, out to Oakville, for the Open, and then for, uh, that way they can take a car. And it introduces a whole new group of people to go transit and off-peak service. And then we have social partnerships. And what we're looking at there, that's where we actually help to deliver on our social agenda. We work with firms like uh, Goodfoot, which is a delivery service uh, for disadvantaged and mentally challenged individuals. So they can ride the Go Transit, deliver their parcels free of charge. And then they also help provide input to us on how this is service work for people that are having some disabilities to look forward to that. 
So I want to take a few moments to talk about a couple of our uh, partnership case studies that worked. One of the ones we looked at was Deloitte. Deloitte came in, they offered us a, a partnership on Up Express and be a lead a founding partner. And what they offered was a contri financial contribution as well as thought leadership contribution as a part of VIK. And initially, I fought very strongly against that, and uh, I'm really glad to wake them to deviate from it. Because when they brought with that VIK, they brought the opportunity to provide professional services that have helped us in our innovation and improving the organization. And one of the first things they did with us is actually introduce us to a higher quality of analytics and helped us work through the data that was in our Presto system and unlock that to better forecast and understand what our customers did, how they behaved, and how we could look at changing our service. The other thing they did uh, was that uh, they carried those services out and this allowed us to meet other organizations and to build a community practice. And we found that to be very helpful as we looked across uh, our, our organization and how we continue to develop it. The next one is an emerging one. So um, when I talk about time, we started a selection of somebody who can help us distribute Presto cards in the city of Toronto as we want to hit uh, uh, significant penetration of Presto cards. We are required by the TTC agreement to have a retail provider. It took us about eight months to get through a selection process with shoppers. It took us about four months to go through negotiations with them. Negotiations concluded uh, around the middle of April. We opened the pilots, 10 pilot stores on May the 8th. Uh, at the end of August, we decided we announced we were moving to all uh, stores, or, sorry, 91 stores in the city of Toronto that will distribute press of cards. And we expect to announce uh, shortly that we will continue to expand that initiative to wherever in the province of Ontario the press of cards are used and sold. This has been a very effective uh, partnership for us from a cost containment perspective as well as uh, reaching out and, and providing a very easy experience for people to get their Presto card, load their Presto card, consistent with the way they do uh, their daily activities as shoppers being one of the leading organizations in this. The other thing we did with shoppers, it, the agreement contains several growth opportunities for the partnership to grow over time. And uh, you will see those uh, items uh, materialize as the market improves and continues forward. That was the end of my presentation.